It's said that learning too much about a magician's tricks can ruin the illusion, leaving you so hung up on the details of the performance you can't enjoy the experience. And it's a sentiment I often see referenced in regards to entertainment in general, that focusing too much on the techniques that make up the sum of their parts will spoil your enjoyment of the whole. But I've always felt quite the opposite. Understanding and learning about the process that goes into these pieces of art and entertainment usually gives me a newfound appreciation and admiration for the effort and creativity the people behind them pour into it. And I will admit I don't have a clever segue for this, but you read the title, you know where this is going. Christian T. Williams, better known online as Captain Christian, is a former film student turned video essayist who details the history, design, and impact of various staples of pop culture, particularly in the realm of animation. After being disappointed by Dawn of Justice's portrayal of the legendary Man of Steel, Christian posted his first video in March 2016 about what he considered to be the best depiction of the character outside of the comics, the animated Superman series by Fleischer Studios, and later Famous Studios, from the 40s. In a stroke of luck most could only dream of, the video exploded, doing incredibly well on Reddit's r slash videos, and subsequently being picked up and shared by sites like Nerdist and Gizmodo. Since then, Christian's not only continued to make videos on a wide variety of topics, but has also become one of the most beloved and well-regarded creators on YouTube, receiving praise from all over the community and some of the people he's talked about, and even being commissioned by IGN to make a video. And looking at his work, it's pretty easy to see why. The writing is tight, concise, and detailed, making well-argued points without wasting a single word, which are emphasized by smooth and simple editing that builds vibrant visuals filled with so much creativity that nearly every frame can be considered a painting. The same can be said of his thumbnails, which are rich with color and captivating imagery. He balances every aspect of online video to create detailed visual love letters that easily stand as works of art in their own right, which only makes it fitting that his videos take such a thoughtful look at the artistry behind every detail of film, animation, animation, music, and more. From a discussion of the political and social climate that led to the creation of the iconic king of monsters we now know as Godzilla, the macabre technological and psychosexual influence H.R. Geiger intertwined into his design for the xenomorph and alien, and the way it further entwines itself with the set design and overall horror of the film, an exploration of the 12 rules Disney animators use to make their work more expressive and lively, how Donald Glover approaches making art in multiple mediums, and even a video discussing how something as small as the color palette of the X-Men's costumes define them visually, personally, and narratively. If you look at Cyclops and Wolverine's classic costumes, they have inverted color schemes to visually represent their opposing roles on the team and their relationship as foils. It's a subtle and clever way to show their conflicting ideologies and you get all that from just two colors. His videos have fascinating insights into the creative process behind the works they discuss. Even when he's more critical of something, there's still a strong sense of passion behind it, and an awareness of the time, effort, and technique that goes into them, even when they're not as well executed as they could have been. It's clear that he's someone who fucking loves this stuff, and admires the people who made it, and is trying to articulate why as clearly as he can. And if you haven't already guessed from my VHS style intro and colorful thumbnails, they've had quite an influence on me. Though there have been and are a lot of channels that influence the way I approach making stuff, I can safely say that Captain Christian has had the biggest impact. His content left an inexperienced me in awe and made me want to learn more about video editing so that I could make stuff just as spectacular as his. And though it's certainly taken a while for me to get somewhat good, and I still have a lot to learn, but I've gained a useful set of skills and knowledge and experience I'm not sure I ever would have gotten without that initial spark of inspiration. However, in doing so, I've slowly come to realize that Christian's videos are nowhere near as complicated as I'd originally thought. In fact, it's pretty simple stuff. His videos rely mostly on motion graphics, text effects, and enough masking to make me wonder what kind of inhuman levels of patience Christian has to pull it off so well. For example, his classic frame panel is just a shape layer with a trim path. The images that pop up in them are edited with some speed graphs and masking, with a few extra shapes to hide the overlapping layers. The pictures from the start of his Godzilla video can easily be recreated with the help of a photo editing software, by separating out all the different elements of the picture, using a smart filter tool to cover up the background sections, adding a crop, then bringing them back into the video editor and adding motion effects in the project to create that smooth slide-in, offset a bit for that extra visual flair. The Game Boy shot in his Pokemon video can be done with 
include lots of shape layers, either made separately and stuffed into a precomposed layer, or done in a single shape layer, and adjusted so they can elegantly blossom into that iconic image of 90s nostalgia. And there's still lots I don't specifically know how to do, but I can still make a pretty good guess about how they're done, either with plugins and effects I don't have or know about, or some 3D or particle effect I'm not very good with. This isn't meant to undermine Captain Christian's videos, not at all, they're still incredibly well made. It just illustrates that they're made with straightforwarding editing tricks that are quite easy if tedious to accomplish. As I realized that, my blind enjoyment of these videos faded, but a deep admiration for the work and thought that goes into each one, and an intense curiosity about the techniques used to do so, quickly replaced it. Just noticing something as small as the extra grain added in his Star Wars videos to give it an old school film look is fascinating. Yes, the magic died, but something just as great took its place. An appreciation for the way Captain Christian bumps the lamp, to the point of shattering it. But that attention to detail isn't something he started with, it's something he learned. His older videos are much rougher than they are now, filled with choppy edits and a plethora of post-recording corrections and clarifications. But it's clear to see how he's improved over time, experimenting with something new in each one to push his content as far as he could. A point emphasized by the fact that he categorizes his videos into phases, with him now tentatively stepping into his fifth. Sure, he may have started off with much stronger editing abilities than most, but just like everyone else, he still had to start somewhere. There's a unique joy in unraveling the method behind the madness, the technique behind the tension, and most importantly, the person or people behind the process that brings the art we love to life. And I could ramble on here, but as expected, I think Cap himself puts it quite succinctly in his interview with The Verge from August 2016. Seeing how hard everyone works to grow a piece of art is incredibly motivating, and the process deserves as much appreciation as the end product. And yeah, those are my thoughts. No, I'm not trying to be YouTube-centric, my schedule's just been weird. And after making two 20-minute videos one after the other, I really needed to make something short, sweet, and more or less to the point. And it gave me a chance to fanboy a bit, so win win all around. The next few videos I'm doing are gonna be more art form focused. Got one about pixel art plan, then Sakuga, then a neat but stupid topic for April Fools, then a big ass project for the end of April, which I am terrified about, but also excited for. Anyway, let me know what you think. If you disagree, disagree, what your favorite medium of art to enjoy or make is, who your favorite YouTube video person is, etc. And thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this and want to see more, check out my last video, where I review, recommend, and ramble about my top things of winter 2018. Or check out my video on the strained history of animation on YouTube and the way it's changed and evolved over the years. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe to come flag me. You can also follow me on Twitter for more updates about this channel and other stuff, and hopefully I'll see you later.